Hey everyone, T Jim here, back at you again with another video. And today, I thought I'd do a a remaster of a video I did a while back about the uh, com comic book hierarchy. And well, recently I have taken a look at that video, and I, I wasn't satisfied. I'm not satisfied with it right now. Uh, I think I could do better. Uh, I think uh, there's a lot that I missed out on. So consider this sort of the remaster of that video. And I think I'll be going back and doing a lot of remasters for, for my older videos just because, well, one, I got better better equipment, better technology at my disposal now. So uh, I think I can do better with some of those older videos. And two, uh, there was a lot that I missed out on on the previous um, presentation that I made with this video. Uh, there are some subjects that I missed, uh, some characters and and, and uh, characteristics that I missed with the previous video. So we will be doing uh, the, the remaster of this. Now, uh, this will be right around the same length as well. Also, I believe the presentation was, uh, as far as like the, the widescreen was part of aspect of it, um, messed up. So. Uh, I'll be fixing that as well. So there's a quite a bit of uh, mistakes that I made in the first one. And I think I could do better and I'll do try to do a uh, much better job here in presenting the uh, comic hierarchy, uh, particularly with Marvel, as I'll explain a little bit in a little bit right now. Uh, but uh, just for all intents and purposes, this will be a uh, remaster of that video. So yeah, let's begin guys and learn about the uh, hierarchy of the Marvel Universe. All right, so like in the previous video, there are a few rules that we'll be going over. Uh, as in the previous video, uh, I'll be going over the Marvel 616 universe. Uh, there's not gonna be any alternate universes uh, or the movies, uh, we won't be, we'll be talking about that. We'll be just, just be talking about the main Marvel universe, the 616 universe. So, uh, sorry if you... <laughs> If you're looking forward to alternate universes, although uh, some universes uh, in the Marvel Universe do have this hierarchy most of the time, uh, but it's, it's very confusing sometimes because sometimes they do jumble up and they have alternative takes to the hierarchy. Uh, but for the most part, it, it, they are similar, but they're not the same. So to avoid that confusion, we're just going to stick to the Marvel 616 universe. Uh, as I stated in the previous uh, video, this will apply to most uh, comic universes. Uh, not all of them, since uh, I've been finding out more and more, reading a lot more and more, that um, certain stories do follow our real world aspect and follow our real world rules. So uh, it applies to most like fantasy t elements of the comic universe. Uh, comic community in general um but not all of them so in general this will apply rules apply so dc some of the earlier parts of, of image stuff but not not now because a lot of the more a lot of image stuff is more uh, creator owned and basically sort of their own self-contained stories so yeah um the last rule right here is it must be canon. So uh, this is why I, I prefer not to do the alternate universes because uh, alternate universes tend to uh, disrupt the canon, disrupt the flow of things, and they'll change it uh, every so often. So, and with DC as well, they change sort of change the the hierarchy and the aspect of things from time to time with the reboots so it gets that also gets very confusing so this is why i prefer marvel over dc when i'm talking about this because uh it's been consistent the most uh throughout the years so these are the rules that will be set and yeah guys let's go ahead and begin to find out the hierarchy of the marvel universe All right, so our first category here that 
is new from the previous video are meta animals. Now, meta animals uh, can come from a variety of different species. They could come from a dog, a cat, a bird, a uh, fish, a dragon, you know, any, any type of animal that, uh, you know, uh, that isn't, you know, isn't humanoid. So, yeah, they come in a variety of different uh, characteristics and species. Now, their intelligence varies. Uh, an animal, one animal can uh, understand the language but not s speak uh, the native language that is being talked to. Uh, one can actually have a conversation with, with the character. Um, some can even, uh, you know, do complex calculations and stuff like that. Their intelligence varies. Uh, but yeah, but they're but they're all uh, animals. Some are extremely powerful. Uh, one example that I like to give here is uh, Lockjaw. Now Lockjaw uh, has the ability the ability to teleport himself and others uh, across uh, anywhere for in the entire universe. So he could be on the other side of the universe and teleport himself and others uh, back to Earth. So. That's extremely powerful. Uh, some are considered equals and or pets, so, uh, or partners, I should say. Um, Lockjaw would be considered part of the royal family. He is part of the royal family, so he's considered an equal. He is not a pet. He is considered uh, one of them, you know, one of the royal family. Another example would be uh, Lockheed from the X Men comics. Um, Kate Pride, Kitty Pride. Shadowcat uh, considers uh, Lockheed her partner, not her pet, but her partner. So there's another example right there. Now, examples of meta pets would include uh, the aforementioned Lockheed, uh, Throg, who's a frog who, who uh, gained the powers of uh, Thor through a shard of Mjolnir and was considered worthy to, to wield that shard, uh, Lockjaw, like I mentioned, and Devil Dinosaur. So those are the metahumans, guys. All right, so the next uh, set of beings that on the tier list here, on the hierarchy, is humans. Now, humans uh, are the most common race on Earth. Uh, you find them everywhere. You know, the most common uh, set of people on the, on the face of the planet. The only real places that you don't see humans are um, the northern and summer, southern hemisphere, although there's an asterisk to that as, uh, there's people in the Savage Land, which is, uh, you know, based in Antarctica. So, yes, uh, there, there were, there, humans are everywhere. Uh, typically, uh, a human lifespan is anywhere from a 90 to 100 years old in optimal conditions, meaning if, uh, you know, they have, they're in perfect health all the time and, uh, you know, they, they eat right, exercise, and, you know, anything with, pretty much anything without any outside stuff like a super, super soldier serum or any type of other uh, enhancements like that. Typically, they live uh, anywhere from 90 to 100 years. Um, they have very political views and hierarchy. So me that meaning that uh, one country is, one country's human population is different from another's population so in one country they could have a king or a um, some sort of uh, leader that that sort of rules over them and others is more of a free society and they get to choose and they have uh, elected officials much like our country here in the United States so yeah there's different very different uh, political hierarchies and stuff uh, so for humans in the Marv universe most of them rely on outside sources such as technology or even uh, magic. Uh, we'll get we'll go over magic uh, in a little bit, but uh, suffice to say that that you know people who use magic are just like any other human, but uh, they are uh, they're, they're, they're you know they use magic to to enhance their abilities. Uh, technology wise, uh, you know they use anywhere from robots to cybernetic enhancements, to, uh, you know, uh, computers, or even even a suit and ar armor. <laughs> so with that being said, uh, the examples are Iron Man, 
Punisher, Falcon, War Machine, and Doctor Strange. Like much like I said, Doctor Strange uses magic. He's just an ordinary human, um, but he does use uh, magic <laughs> to uh, en enhance his abilities. Um, he's, he can die just like a normal human can. Uh, he has all the same vulner vulnerabilities and weaknesses as a human, and he ages just like a human. So, all these other people, these uh, other uh, humans, all, all these technologies, such as you know guns for the Punisher, or uh, a suit of armor like uh, Iron Man and War Machine. So that's yeah, that's it. That's it for humans. Uh, let's move on to the next uh, set of people in the hierarchy. All right, next up on the list is altered humans. Now, altered humans are less common than regular humans. Uh, although they, you know, they're, they're considered and look like humans, regular humans most of the time, they are very much less common. Uh, they live roughly the same lifespan as normal humans, which is 90 to 100 years. Although depending on the uh, powers that they have, they could live longer. Uh, and I'll explain a little later. Uh, Ultra humans, they have superhuman abilities, so they could range from a, a multitude of anything, uh, from uh, super speed, super strength, um, wall crawling, uh, you know, magical abilities uh, that in inherit to them, um, the, the, the flight. Uh, there, there's just a, a lot of different abilities that an ultra human can have. Uh, they acquire these abilities by accident or pers uh, purposely inflicted. So let's say in the, in the case of Daredevil, uh, Daredevil has uh, gotten his abilities by an accident. He was uh, accidentally doused, his eyes doused in chemicals, and that made him gain the abilities, enhanced senses with his uh, hearing, his echolocation ability, his, sm uh, his sense of smell and taste. Uh, so that was being... Uh, Acquired by accident, much like Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man accidentally got bit by the spider. He gained superpowers. Uh, one that was infected purposely would be Captain America. He volunteered for the Super Soldier program, and uh, he purposely got the serum, and he would be a, a case where he purposely got superpowers uh, on, onto himself. Now, some are considered Omega-level threats, meaning that they there's such a a threat that uh, they can uh, do harm to uh, a multiple a scale so large that it would do uh, a wide amount of destruction. So, in one instance, uh, the Hulk would be considered an Omega level threat. He's actually the first Omega level threat, if I do remember correctly. Um, yeah, so he can cause damage, you know, possibly planetary. <laughs> So yes, it, it, he has a considerable amount of, of danger uh, to him, and, and, and there's a lot more that I can go over, but Hulk is usually the, the go-to as far as the mega level threats for alter, altered humans. So examples of uh, altered humans are, like I mentioned, Spider-Man and Captain America, Daredevil. Uh, Black Bolt would also be considered uh, an altered human because he, uh, the, in humans in general, have to go through a, through a process called the Terrigen Mist, and they get their powers through that. Uh, it's debatable whether they're more kind of mutant or not, but they do have to uh, go to the Terrigen Mist to access their powers, so I would consider them old humans. And of course, Hulk, like I said, he was created through an accident, through a gamma radiation uh, bomb, and uh, he's an Omega level threat. So that is it for ultra humans. Let's see what is next. All right, possibly the most infamous of the uh, of, of all the, the species and characters in this hierarchy are mutants. Now, these are probably the most popular of, of, of all the uh, of all these uh, in the fandom, basically. So, mutants are uncommon, much like our ultra humans. You you won't see them very much uh, with with the regular cloud a uh, crowd, although. The, some mutants do tend to stick out more than others, and I'll explain why in a little bit. Um, their lifespan can reach to, uh, from 100 years or longer. Uh, much like altered humans, depending on the mutation, uh, they could live from anywhere from 100 years to, to you know, 200, 300, even be immortal. So, yes, um, 
like like for instance wolverine wolverine's healing factor uh causes him to uh, age much slower than the average human even the average mutant so yes most of them have the same amount of lifespan as a regular human but uh a lot of the most of the cases that they do have uh the ability to reach more than 100 years especially with the new stuff that's going on in the x-men franchise right now with john Hickman. um yeah there's, there's just a lot of stuff there uh unlike altered humans though mutants are born with their abilities um so from the onset they they, they are born with this but they don't activate until they are uh you know they're in their adolescence or teenage years although in some cases they are actually you can tell that they're mutants from the moment they are born much like a nightcrawler uh, nightcrawler was born with blue skin and yellow eyes so uh you know automatically we knew it, people knew that he was a mutant now mutants are gener generally disliked and untrusted among other humans even among uh, you know the superhero superhero community in general. They're generally not trusted and not liked uh, They're the sort of considered outcasts within the ranks of a human society uh, And uh, they're pretty much like hated on but some some are even hunted sometimes. So yeah uh, Omega level mutants are pretty pretty significant here because uh, Like I like I said with Hulk they can be planetary planetary threats uh, in some cases, they can go all the way up to maybe solar system level, uh, depending on you know wh what's going on here with 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 their powers. Uh, these uh, you know means like Storm, Iceman, Magneto. They're all planetary level threats. They could possibly, like I said, do more har harm than that because in the case of Magneto, he can affect the entire electromagnetic spectrum and space is filled with the electromagnetic spectrum so yeah there's a, uh, plenty of harm that he could do there so examples of mutants would be uh wolverine like i said a beast uh you know he, he's a mutant as well a uh, storm like i said she's probably one of the most uh other than wolverine's probably one of the most well-known mutants there nightcrawler as i mentioned and jean gray now jean gray is incredibly powerful uh the reason why i, I kind of teetered on the planetary uh, stuff there is because she acquired the phoenix force and the phoenix force is incredibly powerful and it's that one time where she was possessed by the phoenix force and basically destroyed its entire solar system so yes with that means let's go ahead and move on to the next subjects All right, the next race that we're going to be looking into right here is aliens. Now, aliens are very rare on Earth, uh, but uh, just because they're here or rare on here on Earth doesn't mean that they are rare entirely. They're most commonly known through off worlds, meaning out in space and in their own home home planets. Their lifespan varies, so they can live anywhere from like a normal human lifespan to you know much much longer than a normal human their uh, political and uh, social hierarchy varies some are ruled over by a king or any other type of um you know royalty status others have a more uh, more political uh, uh view of things so either they either get elected have an elected official or they're a free people uh, most have supernatural abilities or powers so uh, most of them, you know, do have some sort of ability to maybe like uh, shape change or have a healing factor or flights or some sort, sort of uh, ability where they can do that uh, beyond, you know, normal human means. They see Earth and Earthlings as beneath them. So, you know, whenever you see, you see in, the, in Marvel, when an alien comes uh, to Earth, they usually refer to Earth as a backwater planet because, uh, Earth society as a whole hasn't reached any level of status in the rest of the Marvel universe. Now that the Earth is known for its superhero superhero community, which is why these, you see time and time again the you know, alien invaders are thwarted because of the superheroes. But largely, they're considered backwater because they haven't expanded their empire. We have the human, regular humans have not expanded their empire 
just they're, they're just here on earth so uh yeah they're considered very beneath most aliens there uh examples of aliens are the shiar the kree the scroll the brood and the badoon those are all alien races now some of these the shiar there's a mix bag here because the uh there there's more than one race with the shiar is more of an empire than it is a race uh the kree like i said the scroll uh, are, are very common the brood and the badoon so yeah they're, they're all very very well-known alien races all right let's go ahead and move on to the next subject all right the next subject here we are heavenly beings now uh, heavenly beings are, are considered like godlike beings. They they're, they're, have more than enough ability to to be considered like like very above any other race. Um, so mostly godlike beings are, are are on a planetary scale. So meaning they're they're worshipped on a planetary scale. Uh, so uh, like for instance here on Earth, we have several uh, gods in the pantheon, and they're they're worship here on earth they're, they're probably not uh, worship them anywhere else but here and now a lot of them are considered, uh, believed to be immortal so you know they they can live for hundreds and thousands even millions of years uh into you know from the past and into the future they could be that very many years old you know they could be millions of years old for all we know um some get their powers by worship or uh, from the previous entries so if if they're a godlike being, they're probably worshipped and they're probably derive their power from that uh, that worship. Uh, that's not always the case, but in, in some cases, that does happen. Uh, they have an insane amount of power. These guys can do planetary wide uh, scale attacks, even multiversal, depending on uh, where in the in their own hierarchy they are. Um, there's lesser gods, and there's you know there's the top of the cheer gods and we'll talk about that more in a little bit but some of them have an incredible amount of power uh, most live in a tiered society so uh so basically a lot of them will have like a, like a head figure a head god and then there'll be lesser gods like i said the more more uh a king or a queen and then everybody you know has their um, sons or daughters and then there's we will be a lesser type of gods in the, in, down at the bottom uh, sky fathers and sky mothers are considered the strongest of the race so like i said before uh those who are considered like the top of the tier uh the head of the head of the the table basically are considered the strongest uh they could do you know multiversal level th threats of of power here that they're, they're they're that strong they they can they will shake the boundaries of, of uh, dimensions and other barriers so yes they can do damage Examples of, of heavenly beings are Thor, Odin, Zeus, Sluggert, which is the um, scroll god, one of the, one of the scroll gods, and of course we know that that uh, Null, the symbiote god, was a, a big thing back uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, I know the thing it got concluded, the King of the Black, but yes, he's also considered a heavenly being. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next on the list. All right, one that, that, that I missed here on, on the previous uh, entry with this is uh, dimensional beings. Now, dimensional beings live in places outside of the universe. So, uh, basically outside of the 616. They, some, some of them live in pocket universes. Uh, now, Asgard would be considered a pocket universe and would be considered dimensional, but it's also sort of connected to Earth. Um, there's some muddy waters there, but for the most part, all these beings will live in very, very, very different dimensions. Um, some are part, a part of the race of beings. So, much like our Dormammu, Dormammu is part of the uh, uh, Vault Team, which are sentient, sentient uh, flame uh, or magical energy. So yes, uh, he, uh, there's also some some others out there, but he's probably the most well known. Now, some of them are considered godlike. Uh, much like uh, Shima Garaf. Shima Garaf is considered incredibly powerful and probably near unkillable. <laughs> um, yeah, they're, they're considered incredibly powerful. Uh, I know his presence 
alone could probably destroy a solar system if he were actually to come into the, the 616. He's that powerful. Uh, most of them are considered magical or have, have some sort of cosmic power um, to them. And it's not for all dimensional beings, but um, most of them have either some magical or some cosmic level of power to them. Our last, their life scan can be anywhere be from mortal to immortal. So uh, depending on which being we're talking about here, uh, they could be, you know, anywhere from like a normal lifespan from a human to, you know, 90 to 100 years or less. Or they could be, like I said, with the Shimu Grath, they could be unkillable. Now, some examples are Domarmu, like I had mentioned, uh, Shimu Grath, like I also mentioned, Agamotto, which is a mystical being, he has his own realm and he's pretty much considered godlike as well. A uh, Sidorak, Sidor oh god, Sidorak is incredibly powerful. And we'll have to do a video about Sidorak sometime because he, I, I, I just adore Sidorak with his amazing power. And Annihilus. Now, Annihilus is, is one of those beings that isn't a godlike being, but he does have incredible power and he is mortal. He can be killed, but he always seems to come back because he does plan out things. But he is sort of the head of that dimension of the dark, uh, not the dark dimension, but the uh, neg uh, negative zone. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to see what's on the next on the list. All right, next up on here on the list is the cosmic beings. Now, cosmic beings are very much different from uh, most of the beings on the list. Is that they're they're universally traveled. They they know the universe pretty much like the back of their hand. They they've been everywhere from near and far they know a lot about this other species on here mutants humans even other alien species and heavenly beings they pretty much seen them all these beings are extremely extremely powerful uh a lot of them are able to withstand uh skyfather levels of skyfather levels of power so you know they, <laughs> they they can throw down with the best of them let's just say they they can hold their own with some of the strongest and the best in the in the entire Marvel, Marvel Universe. Their lifespan is far, far beyond mortals, and some of them may be, be immortal, uh, depending on what kind of powers that they have. Um, yeah, they're 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 very very powerful. They're in their own right. If they had their own planet, they probably would be considered sky dwellers as well. Uh, their powers are achieved through uh, external or uh, universal forces. Uh, for example, is the power cosmic, much like you know the, the, all the heralds of Galactus. They've all ach achieved their power through the power cosmic. They sort of uh, their souls have sort of been replaced with the power cosmic, and that's pretty much who they are now. Uh, like as this, for example, uh, examples of these beings are Silver Surfer, uh, uh, Thanos. Thanos is considered a cosmic being. He's actually considered one of the main pillars of the hierarchy of of. Uh, beings which we'll talk about in a little bit is but it, his his story, story kind of waxes and wanes sometimes uh the collector is also considered a cosmic being he's lived a long time he's 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 seen pretty much everything everything there is and he, he has a little bit of everything here and there a uh, warlock warlock is considered a cosmic being and quasar uh, so yeah those are our cosmic being guys let's go ahead and move on to the next in the list all right here we go next to the last so the the next to the last set of beings here are the cosmic abstracts now i talked about cosmic abstracts in the, in the previous video uh we're dealing with the hierarchy but uh, cosmic abstracts are, are very, very much fundamental to the universe if they go uh the universe pretty much dies that's that's bottom line uh, we've seen uh similar things happen with the time runs out uh the incursions Stuff like that, uh, you know, everything that's like what led up to Secret Wars 2018. Um, the Crossroads go, the universe goes. That's just how it is. Uh, they're so powerful, uh, mortal minds can't conceive their true form. As a matter of fact, they have to go through a process just to even be around around mortals. Uh, so yeah, that's how extremely powerful they are. They, they're a lot of them are very formless. They don't have a true form to them. Uh, but in the case of like Galactus, uh, our minds sort of try to wrap around what his true form is. So they perceive him as maybe like, say if he landed on Earth, he would be considered a human-like. If he landed on a scroll world, he'd look like a scroll. Pretty sure you've heard all that before, but yeah, that's how, how powerful they are. 
they're immortal. Uh, uh, they they will live forever and ever as long as the universe is around. They will be around. Uh, they can be killed, uh, but like I said before, if they are killed, it could endanger the cosmic balance, or it, uh, in any case, it could endanger the entire universe as a whole. So you know, the universe will probably cease to exist. So yeah, that that's how incredibly powerful they are. But it's also very fragile in a way because it. it, it uh, they're basically tied into the well-being and health of the universe. Uh, some are given a portion of power to immortals such as an avatar. So basically, like Galactus here, uh, Galactus has given his a portion of his power cosmic to his heroes to go find, uh, you know, energies for him to feed on. Uh, others like e Epoch have chosen a champion to um, herald their justice and, and given a small portion of their of their power. So yeah, there's uh, plenty of other uh, beings that get able to do that. Uh, some examples are obviously Galactus. Galactus is, uh, is integral to the to the universe as a whole. Epoch, uh, the Celestials. It says Celestials are <laughs> they're so in part of the universe. They they they've cr actually helped create a lot of the alien races, including humans, <laughs> on this list. So yes, they are incredibly powerful. And death. Death is a universal contract that, you know, every race has born and died. And uh, death is, is a constant throughout the entire universe. And if death was so happened to, to not be there, as we saw in Secret Wars, I believe it was two, um, it would be bad for the universe. So yes, that's it for Cosmic Abstracts. Let's look at the next and final entry. All right, the final entry on our list is Universal Beings. So here we go. All right, the uh, Universal Beings are basically the creator beings or the stewards of the universe. Uh, they're pretty much the uh, the being of the universe. And uh, there's no one uh, higher or there's no one more powerful uh, than them other than the, their creator. So yes, uh, they're so powerful they might be even be unkillable, much like Shimogarath. It's possible that they, they, they could, he could be unkillable, but definitely I have not seen a case yet of, of uh, a creator being like the one above, above all being anywhere near being killed. So yes, uh, like I said, uh, the, the creator being is called the one above all. There's also a celestial named the one above all. Uh, so don't confuse those two. They're not the same beings. Those are totally different beings. Um, but the one above all uh, in the Marvel Universe uh, that most people that most commonly refer to as the one above all is the creator being. Uh, the one below all might be the true devil of the Marvel Universe. So if you read Immortal Hulk, you know that uh, there's a one below all, which could be considered you know, the, the antithesis to the one above all. We're not sure if that is true or not. Uh, the lore hasn't been expended all that much because it's a very recent uh, acquisition. But um, for just just for the sake of argument, we'll, we'll, we'll consider uh, the one below all the true devil of the Marvel universe. Uh, so examples of universal, universal beings would be, uh, of course, the one above all, who's the creator. Uh, but people like to think it's uh, Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, any multitude of those people who started the company are actually the one above all. Now the Living Tribunal, the uh, Living Tribunal is sort of like the steward of the Marvel Universe. He, you know, he judges uh, all realities, including 616, uh, to maintain balance within the universe. And uh, Beyonders, Beyonders, Beyonders are beyond, you know, even the Living Tribunal, they, they've actually done harm to the Living Tribunal at one point. So they're considered basically universal beings and sort of also created the universe but i don't know if they did or not it is it's kind of murky waters uh that let's that level of power is um kind of murky and uh sort of beyond our understanding so that's it that's it for all the the, the uh, races on this list guys So I want to thank you all for for watching this this slideshow, this this re, re uh, master of my old um, video about the hierarchy about.
comics and stuff like that, and just more specifically the Marvel Universe. I know you probably got tired of me rambling on and on about and learning out about certain things, but yes, I do love uh, educating people on uh, the Marvel Universe, and I love uh, sharing my knowledge with everyone and anybody who will listen. So yeah, that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and make sure you turn on that notification bell so that you know when next time when I upload, which is uh, every Saturday, guys. But yeah, uh, what do you guys what do you guys think? Do you, did I miss anything? Did I leave something out? Or is there another uh, aspect of the Marvel Universe you want to talk about more specifically uh, in the comments below? So all right, guys. You guys, uh, that's it for me. Take care, guys, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye, guys.